All right, well, the other grand finalists, Parramatta, we all know the blue and gold faithful, they are banking on 2023 yeah. being their year. They, the premiership window, it's still well and truly wide open for Brad Arthur, even with those key losses. Cooper, can they be the premiership threat? Can they make sure that they are there on the decider and go one better this year? Absolutely, they can. Um... I'm a little bit worried, though, about the Eels. Um, not often does the same teams and they make the grand final year before get back there. So if I had to have a bet, I'd say the Penrith are more likely to do it than, than Parramatta. Um, when you lose a grand final, it's, it's very easy to start pointing the finger at this happened, you were the fault. Uh, you can become quite you know, separated in the way that you went about it because egos get in the road. Um, but when you want to go back to Everest and try and win that grand final, you need to be more selfless, more team first, more galvanised than ever before because it's not f what football let, let them down. It's uh, can you get back there with the team unity, of f team first mentality. So um, absolutely, I think they can. Um, they really need to be galvanised this year and they've got some egos in that group that seem like they can separate at different stages. So big job for Brad Arthur. I think football isn't the issue. It's probably between the ears for Parramatta to get back to the grand final this year. When they get going, they're Ooh. as good as any team yeah. to watch, um, particularly with the footy. But uh, it, it starts at the start of the season and how you build your foundations. And defensively, they just weren't there um, last year and they got found out. Um, obviously, at the back end of the year, on the biggest stage, defensively, they, they were up and down um, throughout the year. Huge head-scratching results, yeah. you know, where you just thought, my gosh, what's happened? And our Parramatta gone. And then they'd come back and do something out of the yeah. box again. Uh, their back row certainly looks a lot different. The, the loss of Sean Lane in the trial period is a huge blow for them because he was so good with Dylan Brown out on that left-hand side. Uh, so at the moment, no Ryan Madison, no Sean Lane, no Isaiah Papali'i. Their back row was one of their great strengths last year and one of the reasons that they had the success that they had. So how Brad Arthur gets guys um, like Matt Dury, uh, Jermaine Hopgood, these type of players, um, Jack Murchie, to, to perform out of their skin... That's what we've seen the top coaches do. When, when they get those players that are part of the roster, when they come in and get their opportunity, they play like marquee players. That's what the great coaches do. So he's got to do that. Uh, the key signing of Josh Hodgson and the loss of Reid Marnie, how that works. They're a highly dominant side by playing through their middle forwards, uh, particularly Junior Palo, and also playing off their seven and six. So the, you notice last year, a lot of wide passes from Reed Marnie using the running games of Moses and Dylan Brown. Hodgson, on the other hand, he likes to play crafty with his middle forwards around the scrum base. You'll often see Josh get out taking a step like this. He's always out scheming around the ruck. Now, Mitchell likes the ball in his hands early. Josh likes to get out and play around the ruck. So how they manage that balance will go a long way to see where Parramatta finish. I think if they get going, I think they can, they can cause some real damage again. And their, their DNA is that power game, right, through yep. their starting front rows. And I think one area they made a uh, mistake in last year's grand final is they were vocal publicly about the way that they wanted to play. They were saying they were going through the front door. Chase the collision. Yep. <laughs> and Moses Leota <laughs> said, no, you're yeah, not. He yeah. went bang, bang, mm. bang in the first six minutes and all of a sudden yeah. a couple of their power runners started pulling back a little bit. So... Um, from a football perspective, maybe they need a bit of a change of, you know, their DNA a little bit. Don't, don't go away from what's good from you, yeah. but have an option B and C if someone wants to take on your front roles. Coops, what do you think, like, when, when you look at a, the, a squad like Parramatta have got where they've got so much tied up in guys like Regan Campbell-Gillard, yeah. Barlow, Moses, Gutherson. Dylan Brown, yeah. Gutherson, yeah. that all of a sudden now we see a bench of Jacob Arthur, Makahesi Makatoa, uh, Jariah Momosia, yep. Bryce Cartwright. I, I, is that a concern? Uh, it's not a concern if you do the hard parts of the game well. So those players you just mentioned need to be good defensive role players. They need to hold the fort up. They need to be resilient for long periods of time. And if you can stop the opposition from scoring points, then load up on your stars. They will come up with points at different stages. And the ingredients there for Parramatta, I'm with Mick, Defensively, they let themselves down. They were eighth or ranked yeah. seventh best defensive team and you hardly ever get to a grand final when you're like that. Mm. So uh, defensively, those guys that need to fill in roles need to be rock solid all year long for the star players yeah. to pounce on the opposition. Well, let's head to Melbourne. The Storm are always ultra prepared. It doesn't matter what the season. Craig Bellamy now in his 21st season in <laughs> charge of the Storm. It's unbelievable. Uh, Cooper, they do look very different and we always are just expecting the Storm. Well, this will be 
of the year that they look a bit weaker or this is the year they're going to be different. But they have lost a lot of experience, especially up front. So who stands rock solid, uh, given that a lot of those forwards are now, they've got new homes? Yeah, biggest talking point is the losses on your screen. Smith, Kafusi, and the Bromwich boys mm. going dif their different ways. And you think about that as a starting pack, essentially. Um, but I think it's the same old Melbourne Storm. I do, because those guys that are left, Bromwich, Kafusi, they weren't household names when they started, yet they left. Right now there's some young kids coming through the system, Trent Liero, Josh King, and you also got you know, Eli Katoa and Tarek Sims. Your starting front rowers are still going to be Nelson Sofa Solomon and Christian Welsh. Mm. Right, so what Craig Bellamy will do, he'll sprint the magic dust on those new guys, get them to become role players, defend for long periods of time, be consistent, play high-performance plays, and then just give the ball to the, the, arguably the best spy in the competition. Mm. You've got Harry Grant, Jerome Hughes, Munster. Even if Pappenhausen is missing for the first six, eight weeks, I'm not mm. sure, I still think they're going to be the same storm. Defend for long periods of time, be tough to beat, and some star power coming up with some plays. Hey, the loyal blue cattle dog, okay? Can't <laughs> no, but he makes, it, he makes an excellent oh, point. point. Matty Johns sa says that every year. How many times have we eulogised the, the Melbourne Storm? And you're right, you look at that spine. Yeah. Uh, you look at their yeah. front row. And, and you just... Like, Eli Katoa, for me, is exactly what Craig Bellamy's been able to do for so long. He, he came onto the scene like an absolute rampaging weapon at the Warriors and then just plateaued. And a change of scenery in the Melbourne Storm system, he'll be one of the best back rows in the competition if he stays healthy. He'll do He's exactly all... Xavier Coates did last year. Yeah. yeah it'll um, be that side of, side of trajectory, actually. Uh, again, you know, they've lost a lot of experience. Their, their bench certainly, um, you know, from a couple of seasons ago when they had that rotation of Dale Finucane and Brandon Smith and Asifa Solomona and these guys coming off the interchange bench, um, they, they were so hard to contain. Can the bench, you know, again, like what I said about South, can they bring something? Um, we'll wait and see. Uh, I think the injection of Pappenhausen mid-season could be an enormous bonus for them. Everyone's saying if they, can, if they can just jag some wins early and get their foundations right defensively, if he comes in mid-season, I think the World Cup's going to have an impact on teams, OK? The World Cup was a really big campaign and a long campaign for guys. And they've had shortened pre-seasons and I think we're going to see some real fatigue in the competition in the mid part. And if you can inject someone with the speed of Pappenhausen into that combination of Grant, um, Hughes and Munster that have had 10 or 12 games and they're humming and you throw him in, they could really accelerate towards the back end of the year. So it's not all doom and gloom with him being out early. But um, yeah, I think Melbourne, Melbourne will definitely be up there challenging again. What are the concerns for Pappenhausen and does a premiership and Storm winning a premiership all rest on whether he plays or is back to his best? I don't think it rests on him. A shattered kneecap is pretty hard to come back from. So I got, um, Can they no. win the comp without him? Uh, yeah, I you believe reckon? they can. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm with Mick's point about I like the fact that they're not pushing him back. Mm. I imagine the word is that he's four, six, eight, whatever it is. The fact that they've gone... Pappenhausen, just get yourself right. Mm. Got Nick Meany, rock solid. He's going to be solid for them and give them a chance most games. But off the back of Origin, imagine coming through Origin, Pappenhausen electric. What he's done at different yeah. stages for like six or eight weeks where he's just lit up the competition. Now, I think it could be a good thing, but they need to get that uh, role-playing defensive middle yeah. sorted and then allow their gun players to do what they mm. do.